I just kind of felt like I was like angry. I was angry mm. that he had to go through what he was going through. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Cruising with Zach. Today, my guest is a proud supporter and ambassador for Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, Miss Kristen Andre. Kristen, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. So we're driving around beautiful North Wildwood here. Um, we're gonna be talking about JDRF in a second, but I gotta believe that your motivation to work with that organization comes from your son Aiden, yes. when he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Yes. How long ago was that? It was about 12 years ago. He was two and a half. He was still in diapers. How, how what, did you get him tested for that? Or what were the symptoms? Or I knew nothing about diabetes. Maybe how to spell it would have been it. And <laughs> uh, I went to pick him up at daycare and they had mentioned that he had been complaining of being thirsty all day long. Mm -hmm. And I had noticed that at home as well for a week or two, but I didn't know that meant anything. I right. just thought he was thirsty. He was thirsty. And the director there said, oh, I know it's a sign of diabetes. I'm not saying he has it. I just, that's all I know. And, you know, it kind of hit a nerve and I was like, wow, really? Okay. So I called the doctor. Um, I told him about it. We went in for a test the next day and then it was President's Day Monday. And they called me into the office and said, pack a bag. We're going to CHOP. He has type 1 diabetes. Okay, so what was the next steps after that? Because my best friend in college, he had type 1, or he still has type 1 diabetes. Um, what did they tell you at the hospital? Um, they basically tell you that he's going to be insulin dependent for the rest of his life. Okay. And you stay up there a week with your child and you go to class every single day and learn all about diabetes and how to care with to care for an individual with diabetes. Okay, and I gotta imagine as he got older, it got easier to regulate <clears throat> and administer the insulin and all that? I mean, definitely the steps to handle it are, easy, are easier, but you're always dealing with, you know, physiological, physiological changes. Like now, you know, he's going through puberty, so that brings a whole new... <laughs> Talking about puberty with mom! <laughs> Sorry, <brings> Aiden! <laughs> That brings a whole new set of problems with I'm blood sure sugars. I'm sure it does. Oh, with blood sugars. Okay. We're talking about blood sugar, people. Yes. All right. So, JDRF, when did you first get in touch with them? How did you find out about them? Um, I'm not even sure. I mean, maybe through just going online and researching diabetes, I may have found out about them. It was probably, you know, four years or so after he was diagnosed. I just kind of felt like... I was like angry. I was angry mm. that he had to go through what he was going through. Um, and I just, you know, needed to find a way to channel this this anger into more positive energy. Okay. So I reached out to them and decided to stop by their Cherry Hill office uh, one day after an appointment at CHOP and met the women there. And they were fantastic and they kind of told me what they do and what their different divisions are and and ways that I could get involved and volunteer for them. Okay, so Juvenile um, Diabetes Research Foundation, mm -hmm. obviously they do research. That their goal is to cure type 1 diabetes? Absolutely. Okay, yes. that's it. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. They pour their money into research and development of new technology. Um, to help cure diabetes. But they also have, so I started uh, volunteering in their outreach program. And anytime there's a newly diagnosed individual, they will receive their information from the hospital uh, of where they were diagnosed, and then they can pass it on to me or another outreach volunteer, and we can reach out to them and offer support. Is that in the surrounding area? Correct. Okay. Yes. So I would be the contact down here for Cape May County. Um, you know, South Jersey extends all the way up through Cherry Hill. So oh, wow. all along the way, there's uh, different volunteers. And uh, I would deliver something called a bag of hope. And it's like just a little bag, has a stuffed animal in it, some different literature mm -hmm. and things like that for someone who's newly diagnosed. And then they kind of have a contact if they have questions, if they're stressed out about something. Yeah, it's like a support call. system. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. But yeah, how active? I, I see your son. He's um, snowmobiling. He's doing all that. 
Yes, he snowmobiles, he's into music, you know, he likes to be outside playing, swimming. Um, he just has to really keep an eye and be very self-aware. So if, if anything, as he's gotten older, he tries to become more self-aware and know when his sugar is changing, both in the high range and in the low range. Okay. He has different symptoms depending on which way it's going. But that does take time to learn and, and, and still, um, because the technology is so fantastic. He wears a device that takes his blood sugar every five minutes. Mm. It is also connected to my phone. So I can, oh. I can get the data and I can get an alarm that says if he's going high or low. And then I might send his nurse or him a text message like, hey, you're alarming. Have you noticed? You know, and he might say, oh, I, I feel fine. Mm. Like, yeah, you might feel fine, but you know, you should really check because it's saying you're not fine. How about that? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Um, does he know that Jay Cutler, is, the quarterback, is type 1 diabetes? No, I don't think so. Okay. He's, I think, the most known, uh, the most high-profile athlete. Okay. Uh, he has the pump. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, you probably don't know him, but Gary Hall Jr., Olympic swimmer, he's type 1 diabetes okay. as well. Um, I don't know. Tell him the we look have up. watched football before and saw someone, an athlete, testing his blood sugar. Oh, okay. Sideline. I got to look up who that is. But, yeah, yeah Jay Cutler... Um, yeah, he has the pump. I kind of believe like all the hits that he's taken. I don't know how good it is for the pump, um, but regardless. Um, so you just had your walk yes. for a JDRF. Yes. Uh, tell us about that. So after a few years of doing the outreach program, I decided to get involved with our local walk since it is here in the Wildwood Boardwalk and I was pretty much born mm. and raised uh, at this boardwalk. And um, we formed a team. We started as Aiden's All-Stars and we were the um, third uh, highest uh, fundraising team the very first year that we joined and then unfortunately they're uh, within our very close circle of friends um, a family that I relied on when Aiden was diagnosed because her two children have type 1 diabetes her 22 year old son did succumb to um, a, um, an issue oh, a diabetic no. issue and went into cardiac arrest so when that happened, it was a big eye opener as to, okay, these kids look very healthy and can do everything, but the, you know, it, it can be very scary as well. And there's a real danger and it can happen like that. Yeah. So we joined with this other family um, and we came up with team Stevie and Aiden. Okay. In honor of Stevie and his early passing from complications of type one. And of course, Aiden, who is kind of now leading you know, the, the charge to fundraise. And we've been the top, um, the number one fundraising team for the last three years. Oh, that's so beautiful. this year we raised, uh, I think over $15,000. Whoa! Yep. That's a lot um, more than I thought. Aiden raised uh, about five himself. Okay. And um, and it's been great. It's And all of that goes to JDRF and the research Correct. team. Correct, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so f for families that um, have a child with uh, type 1 diabetes, mm -hmm. um, they can check out the website, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, it has all the information on there. There's like such so many events. There's walks, there's golf outings, there's yes. galas, there's 5Ks, there's triathlons. Yes. Um, and then even if you don't want to do something active, you can just donate. Yeah, um, they even have a bike team now as well. Okay. Where they do long rides uh, to raise money. Um, but like you said, you can just donate and support friends and family that have to deal with this. Yeah, again, it's just um, a support system too. No, uh, that families are going through the same thing. Absolutely. That's great. Um, so we're going to go into the lightning round right now. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. You answer them as quickly as possible. How's that sound? Okay. All right. If you were in a food eating contest and you can eat one food and win, what would you eat? Pizza. Okay. Uh, if you had to choose someone from Hollywood to play you in a movie about yourself, who would you choose? Um, Sandra Bullock. Okay. <laughs> uh, from Speed? Or from... What, Miss Congeniality. <laughs> Miss Congeniality, all right. That's like kind of funny, goofy, you know. I can see that. I can nerdy, see that. Yeah. all in one. All yeah. right. Uh, and the final question. If you could have any superpower not flying, what would you choose? I cure type 1 diabetes. Uh, psh, Wouldn't that be a superpower? That would be a superpower. <laughs> one and done. You would just like Thanos. You'd snap your fingers. Absolutely. T1D, gone. Gone. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, 
JDRF, I'll leave the website, I'll leave all the information. Um, if you have any other questions, Kristen, Andre, awesome rock star. Thank you so much for being Thank on the you. show. I appreciate it. Thank you. See you, Aiden. Sorry for that puberty shout out. <laughs>